Solvers. This is a very interesting one, if nothing else. I don't recall, to be honest with you, if this came up during the actual test, but, and I couldn't tell you anyway for sure, now that I think about it, but it did come up in a lot of the sample problems where it's asking you to do solvers. There are different solvers. There are three different ones. There's a num solver, a poly solver, and a cis solver. It enables you to solve equations that have two sides to them generally. You have some unknowns in one side or the other, or maybe both. And the solver will do all the calculations necessary in order to come up with the missing variable. It's usually one variable that's missing. Not always the case. When we talk about system solver, you'll see that. So for example, here's an example of an equation that is one-third x to the third plus a is equal to one-sixth x minus b. Now I'm giving you the value here of x equals two and a equals 3, and now we need to know what b equals. Now this is a relatively simple one. You probably could do it in two or three tries, but let's show you how you can do it with the calculator if you wanted to try doing that, especially if it's much more complex than this. So we go into second, and this is a num solver that you need for this one. It just gives you the two sides. You have the square box equals another square box. So we have to enter in the full equation on each side. So the first thing we have to do is enter a fraction. So we do a fraction, hit the fraction key. We do the one and the third. We get out of that fraction. Now we need x to the cube. We again hit this x here for general letters. x, we pick the arbitrary power. So we now have to fill in the power, which is three to the third power. Now we get out of that and we're doing a plus. This is a function here doesn't represent whether A is positive or negative. We don't know that at this moment anyway. While we're entering it, we may not know it. So we want to say plus A. Now I'm going to hit this key more than once to get to the A. X, Y, Z, T, A. So I got my A. Now I arrow over to the other side of the equation. So we have the left-hand side defined. Now to do the right-hand side, similar thing. Fraction, we do 1 over 6, and that's just x, so I can just hit the x on that, and I have to hit the minus sign, which is a function, it doesn't represent the actual value of what b might be internally, so it's minus, and now I have to hit this key again until I get to the b, b. So that's the full function in there. But I didn't define values, so when I hit enter on this, it's going to ask me the values. Whichever one that I leave to be solved at the end, it'll solve for me. Now I have a value for x of 2. I have a value of a for 3. I'm hitting enter between them. But there's no value for b, so I just leave that one alone. I can put anything in you want in there. It's going to overwrite it. I come down to this and I say, what do I want to solve for? Either x, a, or b. I highlight the b and I hit enter. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. 5.3333, and I assume that's to infinity. By the way, if you guys are using the Casio, it handles those type of infinity decimal points very well. You can even enter them. The actual answer that I came up with was also negative 5.33 to infinity. That little bar over the top indicates that. Now, there's something here called L minus R. That means left and right. If there's even a slight difference that the calculator can perceive based upon its precision, which is pretty high. Internally, it actually can solve out to something like 32 decimal places. It would show you that here, but it has a zero, which means that this is a perfect answer. There is no difference between the left and right side with the values that we provided and the value that it calculated. So if you plug those numbers in directly, you should get the exact same value on both sides. And then we have to actually arrow over to quit to get out of this. Now the polynomial solver, this is an important one. I saw this in a lot of examples. And you could solve a quadratic or a cubic equation. You will need to enter the coefficients to solve this thing correctly. So let's try this one. An example speaks a thousand words here. We go into second, polysolve. We have our choice between just a squared or a cubed. We have a cube here. It only solves those two type, unfortunately. You can be assured that any samples you see of this and any of the examples, they will not give you something other than those two. They're the most common. So we arrow down to the cube. 
and it follows the general format with variables in for the coefficients a b c and d so when we hit enter we're gonna have to define those coefficients so what is it asking for here it's asking for a it has a value left over because we used a before for something else that's an internal variable so it, it remembered that value I didn't clear the whole thing out afterwards but I don't want three I want two sevenths for a because that is the coefficient of the x cubed so I just go ahead and hit the fraction symbol it'll overwrite it it automatically put the three at the top I still don't want that so I will just type in the new value of two whoops this is where the delete key comes in because I wanted to go back to the box I should have deleted that value of three there before I tried typing in so now it's back to just a box now I can hit two and then I arrow down to the denominator and I type in seven and then I get out of that fraction that's all I need to specify is the coefficient for that first piece of the polynomial and I hit enter now it wants to know B B is what we have 14 in this particular example again it's showing what was in B before I want to get rid of that so I'm just gonna hit the delete until it delete until it gets back to its little box I want to then type in 14 for B enter now it's asking for C that's the negative 1 7th this is not a function for purposes of entering the data he actually wants to know the value of C in this case it is negative 1 7th we have to override what the default polynomial was which a, which was a plus so this one is sort of an exception but you have to know that you have to hit this key and not the function key at this point so we hit the negative we hit the fraction key again we type 1 over 7 we get out of that fraction so it's negative 1 7 and we hit enter now it wants the last one D D in this case is the very last term the plus 3 again it's plus I don't have to give it a sign so I just type in 3 now I arrow down to the solve case and I see what it gives me hit enter and it says that I have an x1 being because this has three possible answers to it when you have a cubic polynomial whereas a square polynomial would have two a cubic one has three so x1 is saying that one of the solutions to this is negative 49.014 da 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 now if I hit down arrow though I see an x2 of 0 0.007285 etc etc if I hit down arrow again I'm trying to memorize this number for a second the same number so it has two roots that have the same value that's just a function of the way the calculator has done its calculations it tries each individual possible solution and it came up with two of them that were exactly the same what did I get last time same thing x1 was 49 x2 was 0073 x3 was 0073 now linear equations this is another one that I would make sure you know how to do it's less likely you're going to see the num solve to be honest with you but the poly solve and the sys solve be ready for those it enables you to solve either side either a quadratic or a cubic equation but in linear form you will need to enter the coefficients just as before but they're entered differently now it doesn't prompt you for each you'll see so for example let's say I want to system solve this equation triple equation and there's an X there's a Y and a Z in each one of them so what values of X Y and Z will solve all three equations simultaneously because this is a triple simultaneous equation so if I go second system solve I pick either a 2 by 2 or a 3 by 3 it's using a matrix to do this just to let you know I go to 3 by 3 and I hit enter now you see what looks like a 3 by 3 matrix on the left and on the right it looks like a vector believe it or not that's how it's doing this math we won't get into the details of it but that's what it's doing it's doing a function between a matrix and a vector you want to fill in the actual coefficients that are all shown here so what's the very top equation top left what's the coefficient there it's one so I hit enter what's the next one negative three again this key 
negative 3, I hit enter. What's next? A 2, enter. But now it's asking for the value that it equals, which is the right-hand coefficient. They still call that a coefficient, even though it's off on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So this is a negative 5, so I hit this key again. Negative 5, enter. Now it's starting over with the next equation. 3, enter. 1, enter. 2, enter. And that equals 8. So 8, enter. Then it's 4, enter. Negative 1, enter. 3, enter. And the right-hand side is 7. And it's waiting for me to hit solve. Enter. Okay. It shows the x value of 25 over 6. It shows the y value of 7 over 6. I arrowed down to see all the, all the values. It shows the z value of negative 17 over 6. What did I get last time? Exactly that. 25 over 6, 7 over 6, and negative 17 over 6. So I have to go to the quit in order to get out of this screen. Number bases. Well, the calculator supports the different number bases that you would see in mathematics. You can do hexadecimal, which is base 16. You can do binary, base 2. Decimal, which we all use normally, base 10. And octal, which is base 8. Note that binary will not resolve to more than 8 digits. Remember that if you try to convert from a decimal or a hexadecimal or even an octal to a binary, you'll only see 8 digits. You actually get an error, I believe. If, it, if it's more digits than that. And the same problem with octal, it can only resolve to 10 octal digits. Let's say now I want to convert 125 decimal into octal. Now the calculator is already in decimal. I didn't change it to be defaulted in any other one. So all I have to do is type in 125 and then I hit the base, which is second nine. And one of the choices here is the fourth choice, I believe convert it to octal. I hit enter on that one. It's going to convert 125 to octal. I hit enter. It says 175 octal. What did I get last time? 175, the little o means octal. It's like the little b means binary, the little h means hex. Boolean logic. It supports all basic Boolean equations, the ands, the ors, the exclusive ors, the xnors, the nots. I'm not going to cover most of these in my example. The one I do want to cover though, two's complement for computer engineering is an important conversion you need to know because it's used in internal communication registers to represent a negative number and I'll leave it up to you to look up why it does that. But for purposes of this example, let's say I want to find the two's complement of the decimal number 1910 but I want to have it displayed in octal. So let's see, well, this is going to be a two-step function. I'm warning you right now. So the first thing I want to do is type in the function. So there is a function called second base. I want the logic function. And I have to go all the way down to twos, the sixth entry. So if I hit that, that's the function that's going to be activated. This is when you enter the function first and then the number. So it's asking me for what number do I want to get the twos complement of. So I just type in 1910. Again, I don't have to hit the close parentheses, and I hit enter. What do I get? I get a negative 1910, but that's in decimal. What do I want to do if I want to convert that to octal? What I do is I go second, base. I want to convert it to octal. Look what it did. This is an important one to know. It automatically assumed that the last answer I got, because I didn't type in a value, the normal functions to convert, you type in the value first, then what you t base you want to convert it to. Since I didn't enter the number first, it assumes my last calculation, which is negative 1910 and specified as ANS for answer. It's going to convert that to octal. I just have to hit enter. And that is 674212. What did I get last time? Six seven four two one two in octal, the little o. Complex numbers. If you're doing uh, power calculations, this is critical to you. So if you're doing the electrical power, 
test for your PE, you'll see questions like this even on the FE exam if you're doing the electrical and computer FE exam. So you can do complex numbers, all common functions with them. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. You can get the arguments or absolute values of calculations. You can do reciprocal, squares, cube calculations, complex conjugate, very important, complex conjugate, because you use that to do conversions. It's easier to do the division by the conjugate right, on both sides of an equation than to try it in other forms of a complex number. I'll leave that up to you to look that up. But you do have to note that you must be in decimal mode. You can't be in octal or hex or binary to do these complex number calculations. So here's one I want to do. Conjugate of two complex numbers, 5 plus 4i, which is the real value of 5 plus 4 imaginary, times 2 minus 2i, a real number of 2 and an imaginary number value of negative 2. I want those two numbers multiplied together. This is actually pretty simple with this calculator. You don't have to necessarily activate a function to do the base calculation of that multiplication. So if I come in here and just type in, I have to put parens though. And I would close both ends of this one because it gets confused otherwise. So I have to do an open paren. Is this the way you define that you are going to define something unique in the parenthesis? We now put the complex number. So we do 5 and we use the actual function key plus 4. Now to get to i, you hit the, the actual pi key three times. And then you close the parenthesis. Now you've defined an actual contained complex number. You can do whatever you want with that. I'm going to times it by another complex number. So I'm going to open up another paren. I'm going to put 2 minus 2i, close the paren. If I hit enter on this, there's my answer, 18 minus 2i. But I didn't want just the multiplication of those two complex numbers. I wanted the conjugate of that, complex conjugate. So that is an actual function, complex number set of available functions. So I do second complex. What do I want to do here? I can calculate anger, pol polar angle, magnitude. I can convert uh, over to the, a polar form. I can convert if it was polar already over to that. But here's one, number six, the conjugate. So if I hit that, it opens up a function. Well, all I have to do at this point, this is another thing I didn't show you yet, is I just have to arrow up to that last answer and hit enter. Again, I don't have to close the parenthesis on that. It's going to give me the conjugate of the complex number 18 minus 2i. If I hit enter, it is 18 plus 2i. Not always that simple, but that's what it is in this case. And what I got last time was 18 plus 2i. In the next part of this program, I will be covering an effective study technique, or how to use your time and efforts effectively. That concludes part five. Hopefully you've learned something today about properly using the calculator to answer many of the questions that will be posed to you. If you did gain something from it, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel. Simply click on the little head here and you'll have the opportunity to subscribe. Thank you.